Hello, Salaja here. This video is going to be shorter than normal because I'm just going to be adding a start button. Up until now, I've just been adding and removing a torch on the clock that runs the uh, CPU. That's all right for testing, which I've been, which is all I've been doing so far. But if I want to run proper programs or use it for anything um, more meaningful, it's not going to be practical because by adding the clock the program resumes from whichever line it was on. In this case it was here so if I turn it back on or replace the torch it'll just move on to the next one and loop back and so on. However what I really want is an on-off on, on, on off switch where when I turn it on it will start at the first line and then perform whatever program has been installed on it. Now the purpose of an on-off switch is to really get the CPU into an initial state. In this case the initial state is just having the um, having the program counter reading the first line rather than starting wherever it left off last time when it was turned off. Now the way I'm going to get it to start at the first line is by having the act of pulling a lever so I'm going to set this here um, that's going to be my on off switch and the act of pulling the lever is going to essentially I'm going to hotwire it so it performs a branch to the first line so it's a bit of a hack but that's how I'm going to get it to read the first line now how do I do that well if I make this line here dark it's going to branch to whatever line is indicated by these four bits here now if these four bits are zeros or all, all dark when it branches it'll return to the first line so really what I want is I should, I'll come over here uh, these four lines here and this one here all need to be dark for a short time and then the computer can resume and it'll carry on from the first line which is what we want now um, by looking because of this inver inverter here if I add a torch here you can see it makes these two dark. So really all I need to do is um, have some sort of trigger that sets these ones high which will in turn make them low. Uh, this line here which controls the jumping will also need to be forced low and the only way to do that is by uh, making a patch of the path inverted. If You can see that these ones have an inverted section here where it gets inverted and then it goes into the uh, decoder. This uh, branch line doesn't have that so I'm going to give it one. Okay, so that branch line is still going to work. I've simply inverted the signal twice. Now what this does is it means there's a dark patch now I can uh, force that to be high by I can force that to be high by putting torches there so I'm just going through putting torches there now you should be able to see whenever this torch goes away this line is going to go dark, these five torches are going to turn on which will make these five lines uh, high which will force every single one of them there to be low so I'll just show that now and I'll activate the clock so you can see that has essentially branched it immediately to one but I don't want it to um, be like this forever so we need it to be off and then turn it back on and you'll see the program will should start uh, counting again or not because I did the clock wrong and it'll be counting from um, the first line there so how do we get it to only pulse for a short time? The 
the way to do that is to make a little circuit, something like uh, like this. So you can see, as I place that torch there, this is just a little, um, I guess, in some sort of impulse circuit, you could call it. Whenever I put a torch down here, that line goes dark for a while, which causes the desired response within the circuit. up to the on-off switch. Give it a little bit more length. And there we go. So now, there we are. So the act of flicking the switch down, in this case down is going to be on, causes the, um, I guess the flicker that d performs the jump to the first line. We also need the on-off switch to control when the clock is running. So that's simply going to be a torch there to freeze the clock. So put it in the off position, repair the clock again. Now, because it's off, this torch is high and this basically seizes up part of the clock. So the clock won't run as long as that's there. You can see we're currently up here. If I come back now and I flick the on switch, we jump to line 1 immediately and it'll begin counting from there. So I'll just do that one more time. We're currently at the fifth line. This is also the um, old uh, program we had before in the last video where it sort of drew triangular shapes. It's part way through drawing the second one. So when I flick this, the first thing that should happen is that uh, that should be rewritten with just the one there. I probably won't make it back in time, but uh, we'll see it in effect. So on, and yeah, it's rewritten it. So that's the first instruction, and that's behaving exactly as we want it to. That pretty much uh, concludes the basics, or that pretty much concludes all of it on how to build a start button. So, uh, thanks for watching. This is a shorter video than normal, but I'll be releasing another one uh, pretty soon. Thank you.